In this video, we'll look at the loops in Julia, specifically the while loop. So how does it work and what does it do? First, when you use a while, you need to set up a counter. That's what will help you know where you are in the loop. First, let's look at what happened when I execute this cell. I see there is while, so you write it as it is, while, and then you have to put a condition like we had with the condition. You have to put something that will be evaluated and is a Boolean. So here I'm saying, hey, the counter should be inferior to 10. I set up the counter to zero and it will get inside the while, which remember, like with the condition, everything inside the while is everything we have until end. So here what I'm doing is that I'm increment, incrementing my counter so that now it becomes one because I want to be able to go outside of the while. I want this condition to be false at some point so I don't have an infinite loop. I will show you what an infinite loop is and you don't want to have one. I will show you in the next cell. And then what I'm doing is, okay, incrementing the counter and then printing the value. So that's exactly what is happening here. The counter is zero. Here I add one, then I print it, it's here. Then I add one, I go back here, it's still true, one is inferior to 10, I, I, I add one number, now it's two, and then I print it. And I keep doing that until, until at some point, counter is 10. When counter is 10, 10 inferior to 10 is false, and so I jump outside of my while, outside of my loop, and print ln here will say counter is 10. Now let's look at the infinite loop. So the infinite loop can happen for different reasons. The first reason is instead of real condition here, I just put true. So if I put true, there's no way I'm going out with what we know for now. So here, what happens if my counter is never incremented? What happens if I stay in zero? Well, if I stay in zero here, this evaluation will always be true. It's going to be zero inferior to 10 and it's always gonna be true, and this will never end. I'll show you, my crash the computer, or I'll show you, I'll try to stop it. Cool, it worked. So what happened? Well, it's printing zero many, many times. If you look here, you see this huge bar here. So why? Why? Well, because the computer, in this short amount of time, has been printing zero as fast as it could for this amount of time which because the computer is fast, it was many, many, many times. So I just remove that so we can go back to the next cell. But what you need to remember here is you never want to have an infinite loop because it will probably make your computer crash or the program crash. It's not something you want. So most of the time you want to be sure that there is some way to get outside of your loop, be it this loop while or whatever the loop we'll see later. Now I'll show you another way to get out of loops. So there is something called continue and there is something called break. Now with while again, we start with a counter. Here everything is the same. I check if my counter is superior or inferior to 10. If it's inferior to 10, then we're happy and we continue within the while. If not, and I can show you here too, if my counter is 100, then nothing happened because this condition here is false. So I just jump to whatever comes after. Now, if I want to have a condition within my while, I can do that. I can have condition is in my loop and I can have even another loop in my loop. I can have any code. So here I add one and then nothing happens. So if I run this, you'll see that it says one as before because all is good here. So one, the condition here is false, this one is false, so I just print one. Then I go back here, this is true, one is inferior to 10, and I look at the counter and I add one. Now my counter is two. So this condition kicks in, and what does it do? Well, what does it do? What does it do here? So print ln continue one. We have that here. This is going to be printed. And then continue and then continue to printed. Continue to is not printed, so why? Because continue means go back to the while. It doesn't mean gets out of the loop. It just means you'll stop whatever you're doing right now and you go back to this while and it's a new iteration of this while, of this loop. So cool, so I'll check again, I already incremented my counter, which is really important because if I had to continue before that, then it would become an infinite loop, you can try. And well, I evaluate this again, I increase it again, now it's three, so it will print three because all those conditions are false and then 
I go back here, it's going to be 4. When it's 4, this condition will be true. And when this condition will be true, then I will print break 1, which is here, with a loop that's what you need to do, right? You need to check what are the different steps so you really understand it. And then break. So break 2 is not printed. What is printed net is, next is what we had outside of the loop. So why? Because break, what it's doing, it's killing the while. It's killing your loop. It's saying, hey, you don't care about anything else, just get out now. So what's that? that's what's happening, and we'll break, and we are out. So we start to print the next line. Now, a more common way, at least for what I'm doing, to work with while or with loop, is to actually loop over an array. So here we got an array with my friends, and I put different names, and all in strings. And what I'm doing is this, i is equal 1. So remember, when we create variable, we don't want to create variable a, b, c, d, etc. But i for a loop is something that many people use and people will in general know that you're speaking of an iteration or counter of a loop. So i is equal 1 because the index in Julia starts in 1 and we'll say, okay, while i is inferior or equal to the length of my array, then take my friend, take the friends that you have right now in this index and print it in a string. That's all in a combination of everything we've seen before. Then increment your counter or you'll have an infinite loop. So when I do that, it's printing, hey Ted, hey Robin, it's great to see you for everybody. Right? That's one way to loop over an array and well do something with all the value we have, in this case a print. Now I'll give you an exercise. This exercise is the following. Create a code that will be a loop that will loop over the length, that it will check the length of an array. You can use my friends here or you can use whatever array you will be creating. So it will loop over that and it will print the value of what it's looking at in this iteration of the loop and then it will remove it from the array. So the while will check the size of the array. So if it's with my friend here, you will have a list of five, then you'll print, for instance, Ted, then you'll remove Ted, and then you'll continue and you'll print Robin, you'll remove Robin, etc., up until the list is empty, and when the list is empty, then the loop will end. When the code is ready, put it in a comment in YouTube. I will mark and pin, pin the first one with a good result for everybody to see. If you got question, please go ahead. If you reach this stage of the video, well, consider subscribing, and I see you in the next video.